Texas announces it's ready to reopen. Mississippi also ending lockdowns. Other states loosening restrictions. Plus, an update on the CPAC Nazi rune fake news controversy. And the Biden administration is releasing COVID-positive illegal immigrants into the U.S. Welcome back, Texas. That's what it feels like right now. That's how I feel about this. As I hear and and see the announcement out there that the great state of Texas, Governor Abbott, finally saying enough is enough. We're going to get rid of the statewide mask mandate and lockdown orders next week. Yes. Welcome to freedom. This is Texas telling lockdowners to go Fauci yourself. And it's about time. I'm pleased to see it. No more statewide mask mandate. Business is 100% open. Going to be much closer to normal life as of next week. It seems that Governor Abbott has seen the light. Perhaps he also saw some decline in his polling among Republicans in his state after the deep freeze and the terrible conditions when the power went out. But I think he also has been seeing for a while the leadership that Florida has displayed on this issue and perhaps got a little jealous or just realized, hold on a second, Florida's leading the way. Look, I don't care how somebody gets onto team freedom here. I I don't care why they're deciding to abandon the lockdown or mentality. I just want them to do it. I just want our leadership to stop. There's There's nothing radical about the move that Texas is making here. Cases have been plummeting for weeks The seven-day rolling average is at about 7,600, okay? That's the lowest it has been since October. Cases are plummeting. But, of course, as soon as the announcement comes out, the the lunatic lockdown governors like Gavin Newsom react in the fashion we all know they will. Absolutely reckless, the unctuous fraud Newsom tweeted out in response to the Texas news. It is simply astonishing that after the winter America went through with records set for hospitalizations and deaths across the country, despite months of masking and lockdowns that so many Biden voters still adamantly believe the extended mask mandate is the key to saving us. Actually, it's, it's double masking now, as you know. Dr. Fauci recently discovered that the soon, uh, as soon afterwards the CDC was parroting that guidance. The science can be so convenient in its timing. But convenience has been on the side of the lockdowners all along. Just ask Gavin Newsom, who right after he tells the state of California, no indoor dining for you because the plebs cannot be allowed to uh, spread the coronavirus. He also then is much more able to get indoor reservations at French Laundry for himself. So everybody wins, right? They say it's about the science. It's really not. For so many Democrat governors, for so many people who have been making these decisions, it's all about the politics now. And here's the big problem they have. Texas opening up. No more restrictions. Mississippi opening up. No more restrictions. When I say restrictions, I mean on businesses, right? You can have full operating capacity back. North Carolina, South Carolina, allowing more people in bars. The push to reopen is underway. And I say, let's go. Let's do it. Vaccinations are getting distributed every day. The case, no, the case number is going down and down and down. If they're really going to claim that we have to keep waiting until the virus is at zero or near zero, uh, they should have to say that now and explain. They, they should show their work on that, explain why they've moved the goalposts at every point. They've been wrong constantly, and then they've changed the numbers to suit their fancy. Oh, well, we can we can open up when we get to this number. Actually, it's that number. Actually, it's this date. Actually, it's that date. We're all dizzy with the BS, and I know I've had enough. Here's the problem for the lockdown governors like New York's Cuomo, California's Newsom, Michigan's Whitmer, New Jersey's Murphy, Pennsylvania's Wolf, Maryland's Hogan. Go down the list. All these different governors. Not, of course, Ron DeSantis, thank God, leading the way to freedom. But if people are able to see over the next even 90 days that the states that get rid of restrictions finally 
that now remember that doesn't mean that at the city level all restrictions are gone so there will still be some mask mandates that this is this is a fight that's underway this doesn't just go away with the snap of a finger um but if we can see over the next 90 days that the caseload continues to decline that things continue to improve in states like mississippi and texas and others who are increasing the freedom and lessening the mitigation and restriction measures that are in place how will the lockdowners be able to justify at that point what they have put their states through? Let's actually finally run this experiment. I, I wish we could just go with, you know, one state where people would say, you know what? No, no mask requirements of any kind. Let's see how we do. And then another state nearby with a mask requirement. Remember, mask requirement means this, the force of government saying you must do this or else. I'm not telling anybody, nor have I told anybody, you shouldn't mask, don't mask, you're not allowed to mask. No, the issue here has always been the force of the state and whether or not they have the right to do this and whether or not it's a sensible thing for the state to do. But for an individual, if it makes you feel better, if you you think it improves your safety or makes you and your family members feel more comfortable, go for it. See, I believe in freedom. That means the freedom to choose masks, actually, if you want. But no, the state has forced it quite literally over our mouths and in our throats. And that's what we've been going through. But what do these lockdown or states now say? If California continues with restrictions, if New York continues with restrictions on indoor dining and a whole array of things, and then we see the caseload continue to fall, then we see this continue to happen. What are they going to tell us then? Oh, They'll just lie. I mean, they'll never admit this. You understand this has become a religious belief for people. Masks saved us. Did they? Did they really save us? How many people did they save? If you wore a mask at all times in a clinical setting, you changed the mask, you wore it properly fitted, it never left your face. Maybe, but you only have to be unmasked once to get infected. How many people do you see that go into restaurants? How many people do you see the moment the cameras aren't rolling in the media, the mask comes down? It's virtue signaling, mostly. That's what's going on. That's what's been going on by the people in the media that are always, oh, I'm going to wear a mask. I'm going to wear two masks now. Why weren't they doing that months ago? It was so obvious that two masks were better. Why weren't they doing that months ago? Well, they, they won't tell you that. They are terrified now in these Democrat states that people will actually see the truth. And here's a prediction that I want to go back to in six weeks. And I've all, I put this on, on BuckSexton.com. I put an editorial up on my feelings on this. Go read it, please. Go check it out. Uh, you can also always listen to the uh, podcast of the Buck Sexton Show there. we got a player at the top of the page now. The trend line for Texas's COVID cases will continue to go down in the same trajectory it's currently on. Even without statewide mitigation and mask mandates, it's going to stay in line with the national decline. This is my prediction, okay? All right, Media Matters. All right, PolitiFact, you morons. This is my prediction. I'm allowed to make a prediction. We'll see if I'm right. We'll, go, we'll come back to this in six weeks. Producer Mark is going to... Put this in the calendar, okay? We're going to go middle of April. Let's see if I'm right. Texas's trend line for COVID will continue to go down even after it enters a phase of real reopen here. And it's true of other states as well. And then they're just going to ignore it. They're going to look the numbers and they're, they're going to look at the numbers and they're going to say, you know what? We don't care. We still think we're right. Because their willingness to believe they're right was also the excuse for their control all along. And they are simply desperate to keep controlling your life and to justify their authoritarian power grab over the past year. And plus, they haven't even gotten the chance to leverage the climate emergency yet as a result of this pandemic, right? They haven't been able to use the additional power to that end. But I'm telling you right now, I'm making this prediction. Six weeks out, we'll see how Texas is doing. They're saying there's going to be another surge. There's going to be a big wave. The, the more infectious strains. Oh, all this noise from the blue check idiots on Twitter, on Facebook. All this, all this chatter from people who think they're so smart, who have been wrong at every turn. I'm the one who's been making predictions in advance and being right over and over again. But they still come at me. They still yell at me. Texas is with me. Mississippi is with me. Florida has been with us all along. It's about damn time. God bless Texas. And I think Florida has got to make some room on Team Freedom. So today... 
I'm issuing a new executive order that rescinds most of the earlier executive orders. Effective next Wednesday, all businesses of any type are allowed to open 100 <laughs> percent. That includes any type of entity in Texas. Also, I am ending the statewide mask mandate. Now, I don't think he should have had a statewide mask mandate in the first place, as you know, but better late than never. I've been telling you, I've been pushing here on the show. and We've got a lot of listeners in Texas. I mean, our top states for listenership are California, Texas and New York, which are also along with population, although maybe Florida, actually, which tracks U.S. population. The point, though, is that I've been trying to get the word out here and I even have spoken to people that work in Texas, uh, the Texas GOP recently about this. I'm saying, where is Governor Abbott and what has he been doing? It should have been much better. And people that tell me, oh, but Buck, it's not that bad where I am. Life seems pretty normal. OK, well, that's good. I'm happy to hear that if you're in Texas. It hasn't been normal in Austin. It hasn't been normal in Houston. It hasn't been normal in Dallas from the people that I talk to who live there. There's all kinds of mask mandates and you know indoor dining restrictions, all kinds of stuff going on there. Finally, he's seeing the light. I think it took him too long, but here he is. Is this at some level in response to the disaster of uh, the the freezing storm that came through and shut down power? I'm sure at some level, yeah, his polls have slipped a little bit, but I think I think Texas has also been preparing for this for some time. And they've known. I mean, Florida is getting a lot of attention. I mean, Ron DeSantis is running around. He's number two now behind a former president only. Let's keep that in mind. He's behind Trump when it comes to presidential contenders, according to the CPAC straw poll from from last week. But I mean, it's a former president, right? Other than that, Ron DeSantis is running away with the field. And it's very clear why. Here he is. Play clip 11. I see in many parts of our country a sad state of affairs. Schools closed, businesses shuttered, and millions of lives destroyed. This calamitous reality is just the beginning of what will likely be long-term damage to children, to families, and to society. Sow the wind, and you reap the whirlwind. While so many other states kept locking people down over these many months, Florida lifted people up. Florida takes a bow on this one, and, and it should. And there's a reason why so many people have been going down there during the pandemic, either just to escape for a little while like I have or or to move down there permanently. Florida's economy has been has been going along well. How, how do you explain? I mean, I keep saying this. You look at California, you look at Florida, one lockdown, the other didn't. What did, what did California get for all of its trouble for shutting down all the businesses? Worse numbers than Florida, which was open. Someone explain that to me. Can, can someone ask the CDC to do an analysis of that one? Oh, but, you know, but the compliance and the but, 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 uh, gibberish. You'll hear gibberish from them. People were wrong about this. Massively wrong. And they were wrong all along. But they don't care. They don't care. They liked. They like to think that they were smarter than everybody else. They like to think that they were the ones that understood what was really happening here. And I, I just want to be very clear with you. I tell you, I see this coming. I see that coming. Uh, you know about double masks. You know about the second. I knew there'd be a second lockdown in New York as well as other places. I knew that schools should have been opened. La- I was saying in August, schools should be open. Okay, here we are in March. Teachers union still playing these games. It's absurd. It's despicable what they're doing. There's no real justification for this. Doesn't matter. It's about power. It's about politics. They pretend it's about science. And and Fauci is the worst, the absolute worst. This guy should have been fired right away. It was a huge mistake. I, I actually think the 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 decision not to remove Fauci uh, might have cost President Trump reelection. I've gone to that point now. When you see the data on it, it's very clear. If you were a Fauciite, you voted for Biden. You if you had any qualms at all, even just a little bit of willingness to question Fauci, you probably voted for Trump. Remember, this is a guy who openly lied to the American people. And then really, actually, well, what he did was he told the truth the first time. But then he lied about what he said about has to cover it up because he wanted to push a policy that the Democrats all believed in. And 
an, another thing that I've been telling you about, and I it was only a matter of time before we got to this. Here's a doctor on MSNBC. Remember the arguments that I was making in the very beginning of the pandemic? I was saying this is about risk reduction, not risk elimination. We could save a lot of lives by making the speed limit 10 miles an hour, which we absolutely could. The speed limit was 10 miles an hour. You would save thousands and thousands of lives in this country every year. What's the matter? You got to get somewhere so fast. Why not make the speed limit 10 miles an hour? It wasn't a, it wasn't a specious argument. It, it wasn't uh, it wasn't cynical. It was serious. That's a real argument about the trade offs that society is willing to make to live lives of greater freedom and prosperity in general, knowing that it's not perfect out there. Bad things can happen. But they, they dismissed that argument. And I said, well, if it's so smart to wear masks, if it's so obvious and we've known all along somehow, but just didn't know it. That mass masking was the key to public health during an aerosolized uh, outbreak of virus. Why didn't we do it before? Why did tens of thousands of people a year die from flu? They'd say, shut up. It's not the flu. I said, okay, but we've established the precedent. You listen to the show, you know. We've established the precedent where in the future we're going to be told you have to mask up for the flu now as well. Turns out that the argument that we were making then, that they dismissed, is now the argument the lockdowners are making. This is from MSNBC, play three. Because we figure out what flu strains have been circulating in places like Australia or South America, which sort of predicts what, what strains are likely to come into our, our country. There's been so little flu in those, those two areas, I, I think it's going to be hard for us to try and figure out what flu strains to pick. But you're right. It's, if we mask and social distance every winter, we will see a dramatic reduction in flu, which usually causes hundreds of thousands of hospitalizations and tens of thousands of deaths. I wonder whether that would be, will be the lesson uh, from this. Yeah, I, I wonder. I, I wonder if if we will just do masking and social distancing every winter, which will which will save hundreds of thousands of hospitalizations, tens of thousands of deaths. You know, maybe it is time to do that. Remember when eight months ago, nine months ago, some of us were saying, OK, get ready to mask up forever because you're going to have to do this for flu, too, under this construct of the trade offs. It's no big deal, they say. What's the what's the problem? What's the harm? So you can't really breathe normally. So you're constantly uncomfortable. So you're 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 showing that you'll bend the knee to some state mandate that that literally is regulating how you're allowed to breathe. That's what's actually going on. What's the big deal? They said it's just temporary. You sure about that? You sure it's just temporary? I told you they're going to fight for this. And those of you who say, oh, Buck, we don't have to worry about it in my area. OK, but just wait until they try to figure out a way to make this a federal mandate. Beyond what it already is, once people start less, uh, loosening up on the regulations in their states. I've been cautioned not to give an answer to that because we don't know for sure. But my hope is by this time next year, we're going to be back to normal and before that, my hope but again, it depends upon if people continue, continue to be smart and understand that we still can have significant losses. There's a lot we have to do yet. So thank you. Yeah, another year we still can. Yeah, sure. Whatever Joe says. Do you, does it even feel like Joe Biden? Just just take a break for a second from the COVID talk. Does it even feel like Joe Biden is the president to you? Do you really get the sense that this guy is the president of the United States? He's, you don't really see him all that much. Kind of just shows up, shuffles around, mumbles some stuff, you know, waves a hand in the air and refuses to take questions from the press. Basically, <laughs> that's what ends up happening. This guy's the. This is the great leader that they replaced Donald Trump with. This is the guy that we're supposed to think is going to take America to a, a better, brighter, stronger future. Democrats had a lot of chances, a lot of options. This is this is the best they could do. Well, no, the only way that they could actually get the votes they needed to get the power they want was to pretend the Democrat Party is something other than what it really is. And Joe Biden was critical in that effort. The Trojan horse candidate. That's what he was. And now we see the horse is inside the walls of the gates of Troy and the Greeks are coming out of the belly and getting ready to burn the thing to the ground. But OK, we'll have to wait till that happens. We have another year of this, they're telling you. Who does that sound like? Go back. Go listen to some of the old Buck Sexton shows. You can go to BuckSexton.com, play the podcast there. Who, 
who who was saying this for weeks? They were talking about, oh, maybe, you know, Fauci said end of this year, maybe we can go back on masking a little bit. That was three, two, three weeks ago. What did I say? Oh, no. Next, next June, maybe we're normal if Democrats have their way. Next June. And even then, you're going to have the, oh, but we reserve the right to be able to shut you down, tell you what to do, lock you in your homes and mask you up any winter where the flu is bad. They're already making that argument out there. It's already, it's coming. I've seen this every step of the way. Because when you understand what it means for there to be a collaboration between mass media and mass hysteria, you understand what's going to come next. You understand what's a few steps down the road, and that's what's happening here. That's what I see. And then there are those who are completely losing their minds over this. And I can assure you of this. They will not. They simply will not admit they were wrong if and when we see what I'm predicting we will, which is that Texas will be fine. This is not going to result in some explosion in cases. You have a tremendous amount of built-in herd immunity already because this virus has ripped through the country for a year. You have millions of seniors. 50% of seniors in Texas already have the vaccine. By the end of this month, 100% of seniors in Texas, they estimate, will have at least had the opportunity to get the vaccine if they want it. Uh, you're just going to see hospitalizations and deaths plummeting here. And you know what they're going to claim? Even though the trend line will be the same as it is right now, there won't be any there won't be even a a a dip, a big dip up or rather a big uh, reversal up and then a plateau for a while. That's what you would expect if this was. But they'll say, oh, well, we could have the trend could have been even faster. It's their their ideas, their beliefs on this are unfalsifiable. <laughs> look at California, look at Florida. They just ignore it. We ran the experiment. They were wrong. That's where we are. Ron DeSantis says it. God bless him. It's so nice to have a public official with credibility and brains who's out there, who is in charge of a state, who says, look what we did. Look what they did. Our way was better. Full stop. Fauciism is a nightmare. Didn't help. Full stop. But, oh, man, over at Morning Joe. When they're, you know, going between houses, you know, they, they do the Morning Joe show in Florida, by the way. <laughs> they don't do it in New York. That's these anchors are taping it uh, elsewhere and they tape it. They're in the same house, of course, because, you know, they left more, Joe and Mika left their families to marry each other as hosts on the show. That's a whole other thing. But uh, they, they do it in the same house and they, they tape separately. Um, but, you know, when they're going between the Hamptons, the Vineyard, you know, Palm Beach or where, wherever, whatever fancy part of Florida they're in, uh, going from you know one multi-million dollar home to another. Well, essential workers are making sure the heat is still on in their homes, making sure the air conditioning is working, bringing them food, cleaning their homes, doing the laundry, their hedges, you know, all that stuff, right? But they're good people because they mask and they listen to Fauci. Yeah, they're so concerned about those essential workers. All these, all these elite limousine libs double masking in their in their Facebook photos and on their Twitter in their Twitter profiles while Uber Eats drivers show up and bring them their, uh, you know, sauteed scrod. Oh, care so much about the the less fortunate who are suffering from covid lockdown forever. As long as I'm still getting paid half a million dollars a month or whatever. Who, what do I care? Right. That's the attitude they have. Uh, but they're very upset about Texas and the decision that's being made here. Place seven. Well, I mean, and again, you, you, you look at uh, CPAC and the people that got the biggest cheers there, not people that are going to win elections, mind you, but the people who got the biggest cheers there were the people that were most reckless and irresponsible, Ron DeSantis, which uh, he's used his as actually his calling card for running for president in 2024. Uh, he's ahead in a lot of those straw polls in CPAC. Christy Nome, who uh, was stupid enough, uh, thought she was being cool on 4th of July, uh, to say, we're having this big event, and no, you don't have to wear masks, and no, there's not going to be social distancing. This was back in July, of course, when uh, we were in, obviously, like now, we're, we're in the middle of it. What the heck is he talking about? Is he just spewing lies and propaganda? Florida was right. We have the data. We have the numbers. Compare Florida to California. 
And, and then, you know, California is roughly twice the size of, Cal- uh, of, uh, of Florida. But you look at it on a per capita per 100,000 residents basis, more hospitalizations, more deaths in California than Florida. And they've had months and months and months of extreme lockdown, a ban on outdoor dining in California. How'd that go for them? Masks. Oh, my gosh. If you my friends who live in L.A., they say if you go in someplace without a mask on, you are you're a murderer. Do people realize that anytime they see somebody with a mask, there's over a 99 percent possibility that that individual is 100 percent healthy and does not have covid? Think about how much our mentality has been corrupted here by the panic porn merchants. Think about how much anxiety has been inflicted upon the American people and all the psychological disorders and the the drug abuse and the suicides and the self-harm reporting. Self-harm reporting among children has skyrocketed during this. And they said it was saving so many lives to put us in this through this misery. Really? Where where was that the case? You have states that have 100 percent effective Democrat control that were that were disciples of Fauci. Listen to it every at every turn. And yet, did they have the best results? New York, California, New Jersey, the worst states in the country, Massachusetts, the worst states in the country for COVID-19. That that seems so strange because I thought they were listening to the science. I thought they were listening to the data. Whatever that means. Nope. Anything to beat Orange Man bad, anything to uh, to beat Trump. That was the uh, policy that they were running for COVID. And Trump was the cause of COVID. That was the other ridiculous narrative that was popping up here. And just remember this. They're they're not going to let this go. Even when the numbers show that they're wrong, they can't ever accept. They will never admit that they were wrong. Here's the mayor of Texas. Remember this guy who he flew to Mexico when he told everybody else to like shelter in place and wear a mask? That guy? Mayor of Texas, Steve Adler. Here's what he says. Play 12. You know, it, it's not based on the science and data, so it's based on something else. And, and it could be uh, the criticism here associated with the power going out. It could be the criticism he's getting from 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 the really far right people in the in the state uh, who have been complaining about uh, masking from the very beginning. Uh, but but. It's not the science and the data. We know that when we did this in Texas, cities stepped out first. The state came along later. Uh, The numbers started going down. Every time we have opened up the economy too soon, we've started to see a a surge again. And that's the concern, And especially here. You know, if you are under 65 and an essential worker, uh, you're about to be put into the position where you, you don't qualify for the vaccine, you can't protect yourself, and now you're going to be this frontline worker uh, around people potentially that don't wear masks. I can only hope that our community recognizes we still have a choice. Regardless of what the governor did, we can still choose in our city to, to act like we do have a mask mandate, for people to continue to wear it, for businesses to continue to require it, uh, and that's what we're going to have to do. Please keep locking down the Austin mayor, Steve Adler, I think is a Texas mayor. He is technically a Texas mayor, but not of Texas. Uh, Steve Adler of Austin here. Still wear a mask, still require the social distancing and all this stuff. Until when? Notice how they pretend that there's a there's a definitive answer here. If you look at the data, if you look at the science, there's an answer. Well, what is the answer? They should tell us that. When the deaths are what? When the hospitalizations are what? When the cases are at what level? They can't tell you that. You know why? Because this is a judgment call. This is about what is reasonable, what is acceptable risk for people in society. And the mayor of Austin seems to think that acceptable risk is zero. Whereas the governor of Texas says there are competing values, competing goods in life. And your 100 percent safety from an aerosolized virus does not outweigh literally everything else in society piled on top of each other. That's not how this works. It's a policy judgment. It's not science. This was one of the fundamental lies of this whole thing. Oh, just look at the data and, you, and, and whatever Fauci says, that's the objective truth. No, this was always about judgment. This was always about weighing pros and cons, but they didn't let us do that. They said lockdown or else peasant, we're in charge now. 
and it's all Donald Trump's fault this virus is out there. So now put that buffoon, that, that quasi-senile imbecile Joe Biden in place. Yeah, go for that. That's what's supposed to happen here. So, Mayor, he's basically saying people have to make a living. They have to put food on their table. Well, I would say that the decision uh, actually operates in stark contrast to that. Uh, when we, we find that we are eliminating the mask mandate, uh, then we are putting more people in jeopardy uh, and consequently can see the numbers rise. Uh, and when we see those numbers rise, then we will have to make the decision of how we operate an economy in the presence of COVID-19. That is what has led to the restrictions businesses in the first place. Uh, and so fortunately, the city of Jackson has the ability to be more restrictive than the state. And so we will maintain our mass mandate. And that is an effort not only to protect lives, uh, protect families, but to protect businesses as well. Uh, when we initiated the mass mandate prior to the state, uh, we did so because we were learning how to to uh, how to to navigate or, or offer our own solutions in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, and that is considering both uh, life and, and protection of life, and it is considering uh, economic well-being as well. How long will you maintain your mask mandate? Uh, until health experts, until my COVID task force, which is populated uh, with medical experts who are informed on on the subject, uh, who are following the data of the CDC, uh, until they advise that it is, it is uh, appropriate to do so. Until a bunch of local health bureaucrats... In Jackson, Mississippi, according to the mayor here, say it's okay, it's not okay. Oh, isn't that interesting? So they just have this power now to do this. Understand that if we really take this to its uh, this, its ultimate ends, what, what some of these individuals are claiming really is that if a bunch of local health bureaucrats said that everybody had to be quarantined for six months, couldn't leave your home on pain of arrest, they have that power because they're health experts. They can do whatever they want. Uh, they can be as dumb and as wrong as they want for as long as they want, and you have no recourse, no say over this, other than, you know, whenever the next election comes up. But good luck getting there, given the authoritarianism underway right now. People have asked me before, what can you do? Well, first of all, Mississippi, as you may know, if you've looked at COVID charts as often as I have, has had a, a very high rate of, of mortality from, co- from uh, COVID-19 already. Uh, I think it's in the top 10 worst states. And they had these mask mandates in place. They did all these things they're supposed to do. Didn't stop it. No surprise, but didn't stop it. And when I say stop it, can you just show me one U.S. state that on a per capita basis, you know, is is 50 percent or 70 percent less than uh, one of the more open states? No, you can't. It, it's not there. Everywhere got hit by this pretty badly. The biggest determinants were population density um, and, you know, urban conditions. Well, those go hand in hand, but those are the those are the biggest things, the biggest issues. All this other stuff is just people making a lot of noise about how we're going to control it. Remember, we're going to stop the virus. Remember, Biden said this is what Biden said. We're going to shut down the virus, not shut down the economy. This was just idiot propaganda. No, they shut down the economy and didn't shut down the virus. That's what actually happened. People have asked me, what can you really do here? What can you, uh, how can you turn this around? And I say, here's, uh, here's an opportunity. When the state government says there's no need for this anymore, are you going to obey your local government? Or are you going to engage in civil disobedience over this issue? There may be fines. Some people may even get arrested over it. How long do you think they're going to lock you up over a mask violation? Well, if enough people in Jackson, Mississippi, decide that they're going to get locked up over it, maybe the mayor will have to realize that this is stupid, this is tyrannical, and it's not actually helping anything. So there's an opportunity. It wouldn't work here in New York City because they would. They'll. They'll. If I if I go out there and I don't have a mask on, I try to go into a store or something, they will lock me up, and everybody in New York City will say, "Yep, that's right." So I bow to superior force, not to superior argument. In in my particular location in this country because we've got the lockdown lives it's you know eight or nine to one democrat in the five boroughs and so they they really want to just just ride the fauci train to the very end Um, but for other places jackson mississippi certainly comes to mind this may be an opportunity to say no enough 
enough. You're going to live. How? I'm going to ask you, how impressive do you think the health bureaucrats in the city of Jackson, Mississippi, really are? You, you think they got a bunch of geniuses sitting around running health, health policy in Jackson, Mississippi? Or, or any city, for that matter. But let's think about this for a minute. I mean, look at what a bunch of jackasses were running health policy in New York City. Cuomo's health experts all quit from the governor's office. Yeah. They're losing their grip on power, folks. It's a beautiful thing to see. What is the dumbest media smear of 2021 so far? What is the single dumbest thing the media has tried to weaponize against their political opponents, conservatives, Republicans? Uh, look, it's a big list. And I'm sure you have some some ideas that you're throwing out there that probably are, you know, could could very easily be number one and certainly make it to the top ten. But of, of all the moronic stories of all the stuff that has been said recently about all of this, I've, I've got to tell you something. Um, the CPAC is a not CPAC stage is a Nazi rune story is the most slanderous dishonest moronic indefensible thing i've seen reported uh, in a, in a long time nobody with an iq higher than a toaster oven really thought that cpac built a nazi rune stage as some kind of a dog whistle or symbol for nazis to feel more comfortable with cpac but the woke democrat media is willing to feign unimaginable stupidity as long as it provides a pretext for vicious slander right create create the basis so you can just kind of get away with reporting on something that you know is actually not going to be true you know it's bull crap but all you need is is just that little tiny excuse that and and it's an excuse that's only created it's only possible because the people making it are saying, we're total morons. And that's what they did. Turns out that the CPAC Nazi stage was uh, designed by a company called Design Foundry. And no, they're not a bunch of white nationalists in a in a cabin somewhere up in the North Woods or something who are, you know, building bombs in, in briefcases. No. It's a nice design company that has worked for, oh, I don't know, MSNBC in the past and Joe Biden. And this is my favorite one. I want you to just think right. This is the company that designed that they were left to just design the whole thing on their own. OK, design the CPAC stage. What percentage of political donations from Design Foundry that created the neo-Nazi stage? It looks like the looks like the Odo rune of the SS. We swear it's oh my gosh, the white nationalists are taking over. What percentage of the donations in that company went to Democrats? Anybody? Ninety eight percent. So a Democrat design firm that has worked for Joe Biden and MSNBC and was solely in charge of creating and designing this stage was for days essentially accused of being crypto nazis or you know stealth neo nazis creating the odal rune it nobody really nobody really believed this and i'm going to say okay i i i take that back nobody who was not a a complete and utter idiot believed this most of the people that ran with this story most of the people who were reporting on this knew that it was absurd and i will say there were a few liberals I actually reached out to Matt Schlapp, the chairman of the American Conservative Union. I, I said, Matt, keep us all updated on how many apologies you get from members of the media who ran with the appalling idiocy of the Nazi rune stage at CPAC fake news story. I'm guessing it's at zero now, and I'm going to I'm going to say it stays somewhere in the neighborhood of zero. He responded to me that, no, he has gotten no apologies uh, but there were at least a couple of reporters who immediately said this is a dumb conspiracy theory. So I think everybody should make note of all the blue check libs who were 
literally shaking right now over the CPAC Nazi stage. These are all people who are too stupid or too dishonest or both for anyone of good faith to listen to on any issue of public importance ever again. And there are lots of them out there. The head of uh, NARAL was talking about how this is a Nazi stage and there needs to be apology. I mean, there are people who run real organizations. There are real members of the media. Washington Post reporting on this. A lot, a lot of places reporting on this. And this just goes to show you that uh, being a Democrat today, being a really a true believing Democrat who reads the Washington Post, watches CNN and thinks that it's a real reflection of objective reality. This is this is transitioning into a kind of mental illness. Now, this is a these are people who have a disconnect from reality. CPAC would create why would CPAC create a a an homage out of its stage to the SS? Why would all the. The many, many conservatives uh, who are Jewish who were at CPAC, including Orthodox uh, Jewish conservatives who showed up at CPAC, a number of whom are, are friends of mine, they didn't think it was meant to be any kind of Nazi symbol. I, I think they would they would pick up on it, right? I think all of us would pick up on it. They didn't see it, no, because it wasn't there. But that's now where we are. There is no level of absurdity or stupidity that is too much for the corporate media to use as an excuse to slander conservatives. They think that we're going to go and forget about this? I mean, we, we already don't trust them. We already know they are not worthy of trust. But hold on a second. How much worse is it going to get with them? I mean, how do they not have any if there were real journalists at all, wouldn't they have to do some soul searching now? I mean, they said that CPAC was was put on a, on a Nazi symbol. It's like saying the CPAC stage was a swastika. That's what they were saying. And we're all sitting around saying, no, it's not. And how did you even see that in the first? How did you even think of that? It's just it's so crazy. It's so bizarre. But you understand exactly why they did this, because they, they despise conservatism. Don't you see? We're not allowed to share our thoughts. We're not allowed to gather to congregate anywhere. If they could silence us everywhere, they would do it. If they could put tape over your mouth, metaphorically and, and literally, anywhere, or a mask, anywhere across the country, they would do it. They don't even want to hear your argument. They don't think you should be able to make the argument. Don't you see? They don't want to have to confront you on the battlefield of ideas. That's challenging. That's complicated. That can be kind of messy. It's, it's so much more appealing to just silence your opponents, to tell them to, uh, to be quiet, to shut up. And I see this and I just think, how could any person, how could any person believe that the corporate media acts in good faith after all this? How could anyone think that our institutions aren't run by left wing ideologues who are also deranged and 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 dumb after you see somebody like John Brennan, the CIA director, former CIA director under Obama, come out and say he's embarrassed to be a white male? I mean, what a a I, I don't like to use words like stupid and moron and idiot. I really don't. I'd much rather engage and explain why I think something is wrong or why I think something will have bad results. I'd rather have a worthwhile exchange of ideas, but some things are just dumb. Some things are just operating at a low level of intellect. And that's what you see with, with a lot of corporate media narrative. You know, the, this, the, the low information voter phenomenon. That's what's going on here. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. And yet they're out there continuing to spread oh speaking of former intel officials here's a guy who is a, a former intel official named clint watts i've never heard of this guy before but when he's asked about antifa you know we're hearing about white supremacists all the time how they're about to throw overthrow the country at any minute we got dc on lockdown with big fences and all this all this martial law pageantry going on in dc for what oh the threat of white supremacists meanwhile Antifa is a domestic terror organization, and they keep pretending that it doesn't even exist. Play 13. 
There is no equivalency by any measure between Antifa or any political left terrorism right now and what's going on on the political right. And I always like to remind people when they hear Antifa, that means anti-fascist, which is in response to another. So if you have Antifa, then you have Fa, or as in fascist, which comes down to white supremacy. It's the number one issue in the country in terms of domestic terrorism and terrorism overall. And it's it's followed up very closely behind by anti-government militia groups. And that's really where the FBI, I think Director Ray said that today, he's going to focus on that. I would like to see our elected leaders focus on that as well. Yeah, Antifa is really about fighting fascism or about attacking journalists in the street for showing what a bunch of psycho cosplay left wing revolutionary wannabes they are or about destroying federal property, trying to blind federal officers, throwing rocks, throwing feces, throwing bottles of urine at cops. But, you know, they're fighting fascism. You know, you know what the fascism is that they see law enforcement order. Society functioning well. That's the fascism that Antifa is fighting against.